Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report for Wednesday, and we have Harley Schlanger, or a major player at the LaRouche Foundation, which kind of not only tells you the geopolitical facts about what's going on in your world, but also gives concrete solutions and action plans, rather than just uh, grueling over the horrifying situation that's developing. And the back uh, channel changes that are going on and, and conniving and scheming and lying that are happening in our government is uh, monumental. In fact, uh, Harley, I'd like you to continue with your analysis of what happened with, with Susan Rice and with the Obama administration advance notice about this Benghazi terrorist attack. Well, let's start at the top. Uh, what Mr. LaRouche has done is put out a release saying that Barack Obama is criminally complicit in the murder of the ambassador and the three others in Benghazi, Libya. Now, this actually is a somewhat complex situation, but it's really not complex if you take it from the top. And the top is that since Obama's been in office, he's continued the Bush policy of essentially a British imperial policy toward the Middle East. And in, under Obama, it went into a second gear with this responsibility to protect doctrine, which is unconstitutional. Uh, the idea that we have a right to intervene to protect people in another nation when we determine they're in danger uh, is a violation of the Constitution as to who's allowed to order troops into combat, and it's a violation of the U.N. Uh, fundamental law. Now, once Obama made the decision to intervene in Libya a, over a year ago and not go to the Congress, he broke the law. And he broke the law both because he said it's not a U.S. military offensive action. We're just providing intelligence and then the no-fly zone. Well, that's combat, a no-fly zone. But he also lied because we were engaging in bombings, and we provided most of the firepower and a lot of training for the rebels who, as it turns out, are the same people who killed the ambassador. Some of the so-called rebels that we were arming and backing to overthrow Gaddafi are part of this force, the Ansari movement in Libya, which is most likely responsible for killing the ambassador. Now, yeah, in other words, it was our weapons and, and bullets and tactics that actually caused his death. But they also had some advance notice that this is going to happen. Well, that's what One of the most remarkable the statements point. made was that... Uh, that Susan Rice stated that this was just a spontaneous thing from the stupid video by this, uh, you know, ex-drug addict Marian and uh, Marianite Christian from Southern California, when in fact this took a lot of pre-planning and it was done on a specific date, 9-11. Uh, this was not a spontaneous uh, situation. This is well planned. And the fact that they had advance notice and didn't have proper protection on the site uh, to protect this ambassador is very bizarre. Well, here's, here's the issue. The Benghazi location is, is still a somewhat of a war zone. The idea that after Gaddafi was killed, Libya became a, a bastion of democracy and pro-Western sentiment is completely absurd. Uh, fact, how would a bastion of 18 tribal uh, battles continuing to who's going to control the nation and the oil resources uh, after the fact, and it's a seething cauldron of tribal warfare? Yeah, there's an ongoing battle. There are some people there who are decent people, and they had advanced intelligence. There was a grouping on one of the militias in Benghazi, as well as in the Libyan military, and the head of the parliament, the president of the parliament of Libya, and the acting president of Libya, all communicated to the United States 48 hours, in one case 72 hours before the attack, that they had credible reports that an attack was planned. Now, when you have credible reports from people who are considered friendly government that you're about to get attacked, you don't send the ambassador into that war zone unprotected. There's only one security guard with him and a couple of Libyan security guards, and they were overpowered immediately. Now. Then what happened is that the immediate story came out that there was this anti-American rally in support of the rally in Egypt against the United States around this uh, provocation of this uh, video, and that, that, that some people, some extremists, hijacked the rally and went in and did the killing. That's Susan Rice's story. 
Now, Susan Rice knows that's a lie. And so why is she lying? She's lying to cover up the complicity of the President of the United States. Now, here's the interesting thing that, that needs to be investigated. And, and by the way, Dr. Deagle, there are now seven U.S. senators who have called for a full investigation, including Inhofe of Oklahoma, Lindsey Graham of South Carolina, uh, uh, Joe Lieberman and Susan Collins, Lieberman from Connecticut, Collins from Maine. Um, gee, I forget the, the couple of others. And then a Democrat, Bill Nelson, who's the Democratic senator from Florida, has also called for uh, an investigation into this. Uh, DeMint and Corker, DeMint from South Carolina and Corker from Tennessee. They're all saying, we want to know who was told 48 hours advance and why that was not communicated to the president. And here's what the evidence seems to be. Obama routinely skips the morning intelligence briefings. Uh, they say he misses four out of ten of them. So 40% of the time, the president does not go to these morning intelligence briefings. He said he prefers to read the reports. But the whole point of the intelligence briefing and so the president can get real-time intelligence in a person-to-person -person discussion, and he can ask questions. Now, Obama apparently missed the two days before 9-11. Now, doesn't that seem a little strange to you, that the president, knowing 9-11 has an emotional content for the Americans well, yeah. and for the terrorists? I'm sure somebody was, was tapping him on the shoulder, though, that he should show up for these meetings. And secondly... Uh, there's a, a thing in, in chess, if you know uh, Bobby Fischer or any of the major chess players, I used to play a lot of chess years ago, is it's called the sacrificial pawn. And uh, it appears to me that there's been a lot of backdoor duplicitous and very sneaky discussions going on with Netanyahu and the Israelis to do preemptive airstrike. Uh, and uh, on publicly, Obama well, is trying I, I, to... I want to get to that in a yeah, second. And I, and I want you to lead to it, because I think that there's something sacrificial that... going on here that... Yeah, right. please continue. Here's, here's, the, here's the relevant point. LaRouche is calling this 9-11-2 for two reasons. Not just because it occurred on 9-11, but because the suppression by Obama and Bush of the evidence of Saudi involvement in the original 9-11 means that we still don't have the, the uh, story, the real story of what happened on 9-11. And the other part of that is that the Saudis are continuing to do the same thing. The people who, prob who were most likely the killers of our ambassador are the same network that are killing Syrians funded by the Saudis and supported by Barack Obama. Yeah. Now, what's especially important on this is when Obama came in as president, he met with the families of the 9-11 victims in right. February 2009, and he promised them he would look into declassifying the 28 pages in the original 9-11 report on the Saudis. He never did a thing to do that. And former Senator Bob Graham, who was the chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, another Democrat, has come out very strongly in the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times saying that... Obama is suppressing the evidence the same way Bush did, and he said, why is that relevant? Look at Benghazi. Well, let's look now, at a couple of facts. I'm going to throw some... Pose, yeah. I want to throw a I couple of facts out. So go ahead with your question. Just, just a simple question. I would pose this. Are we safer today after 11 years, trillions of dollars of spending in the war on terrorism, <clears> thousands of Americans dead? Are we safer today than we were in September 11, 2001? The okay. answer is no. No, okay, well, let's uh, state a few facts. First off, most of the major mosques in America that teach jihad, which is one quarter of them, are Wahhabist schools supported directly by the Saudi government. Number two, there are conjoint agents that are Mossad and Saudi Secret Service agents that have belonged to both agencies that were directly involved in 9-11. We know that the Mossad and Saudi agents, we know that most of the so-called pilots supposedly flying these, pla or, or flying these planes were from Saudi Arabia. So, just put one and one together. That's what we're talking about. 
Welcome back. And, um, yeah, this is a very important issue. We have uh, things like uh, Susan Rice saying these statements, which are defined not only logic, but common sense, and even what I call decency. What, we're, what they're doing is we have the Obama administration moving toward what I call omnicide, which is not only killing uh, every citizen on Earth, but everything right down to bacteria. Um, I can hear you breathing there. Either you're working out really hard or your microphone's too close to your nose. <laughs> ah, there we go. So, uh, Hardy, tell us about this. What, what's your analysis? This is so crazy, you think you're in a dystopic world, it's a nightmare. What, what the hell is happening? Well, Susan Rice is part of the witch's coven that control Barack Obama on behalf of the British. She got her degree at Oxford. One of the people she's very close with is Michael McFaul, the U.S. ambassador to Russia, whose purpose is to try and undermine the Putin government. Susan Rice works very closely with Samantha Power, who is another top Obama supporter and the wife of Cass Sunstein, who is another Obama controller. The other two people who are the, actually the other person who's very important for Obama is Valerie Jarrett, who also was educated in England. So you've got a group of these British educated uh, controlling women. Now, what did Samantha Power and uh, uh, Susan Rice push? This idea of responsibility to protect, which is a bogus human rights doctrine, which claims that if there's an, a force that's conducting policies that are harming its people, we have a right to intervene. Not that we have to go to the Congress or to even to the United Nations. We can just launch an attack. Now, when they went to the United Nations on Libya, they never said it was to carry out offensive actions to get rid of Gaddafi. But that's, in fact, what it was. And now they're saying the same thing about Syria, that they have to get rid of Assad because he's a menace to his own people. Now, the this responsibility to protect is a doctrine which is an imperial doctrine because it starts from the idea that one nation has the right to determine who's doing things that are legal or not legal. Now, the other point here is that Susan Rice repeatedly lied to the United Nations about the Syrian situation, and now she's lying to the American people about Libya. And so what Mr. LaRouche and our organization are doing, we were on Capitol Hill yesterday and again today, And we're demanding that Congress stay in session, that they not go out of session on Friday. You know, they're planning on going out of session Friday probably until after the election. Now, you can't leave Obama alone during that period of time with this kind of fragile situation in the world. So we're demanding, first of all, that the Congress stay in session. Secondly, that they do an immediate investigation on an emergency basis of what Susan Rice, why Susan Rice lied, why the president is refusing to allow hearings to take place on this. Uh, Ileana Ross Leighton of Florida, the head of the House Foreign Services Committee, tried to have a hearing yesterday on Egypt, and the Obama administration would not send the person who was supposed to be there. They blocked having the hearing. And so you have a president who's refusing to be held accountable for the activities of his administration. Now, I would just throw one other question in there. If uh, Susan Rice is so committed to protecting human rights, what about the human rights of our UN, our, our Libyan ambassador, our ambassador to Libya? His human rights weren't protected. He was left unprotected when he was when we had adequate intelligence that there was a likely threat against him. Right. So that's where you see the hypocrisy of this crowd. But what Mr. LaRouche is saying is that if the Congress can be forced to be held accountable so that they can hold the president accountable, we could have Obama out before the election. Because this is precisely the kind of thing that the American people don't tolerate when there are actions of this sort where where lives could be saved and they weren't saved for what reason? You don't even it's, know. We don't even it's know. not only that, it's the, it's the duplicitous policy of Obama. The, right. the air attack by uh, Israel could not occur without our tanker bombers supporting them. Secondly, uh, without our advanced uh, space-based satellite systems to identify the nuclear facilities underground using torsion field imaging and other technologies that we have that the Israelis don't have. They have ImageSat 
they have advanced uh, systems, but they can't even get their jets to drop bombs to go that far. Even if they'd launched them from their base in Georgia, they built with uh, the TIE Eater uh, from Georgia, right? <laughs> the, well, you know, the same, the same program on Sunday where Susan Rice lied about not having, that, that this was not premeditated, she made the following comment. She said, there's no daylight between the U.S. position and the Israeli position on Iran. Okay. Now, what that this means is, is that ahead. the U.S. is giving Netanyahu the go-ahead, and the Daily Telegraph yesterday had an article <clears throat> saying that the U.S., that Obama is prepared to give Netanyahu a go-ahead if the election race stays close. Well, I see a linkage with the uh, QE3. Uh, Absolutely. And, and, and there's a direct, and I'll tell you, explain the linkage as to what I see happening. Here's this, a, a real probable scenario that will happen because we know that both uh, Romney and Obama have recommended that they support Israel's uh, policy. But Obama is being very duplicitous on us. He's being very sneaky. Because on the one hand, he's trying to say, no, 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 don't do this before the election, don't do this. And on the other hand, he's actually promising everything, including the sun, to the Israelis. Now, this isn't rational. In, inside the Israeli government, we even have a report last Sunday that Netanyahu went to the American public directly, past the president and the Congress, to the American public to try to, in an election year, make statements that we have to support Israel. Now, I support the state of Israel, but not this way. People inside their IDF and generals and other people know if they start a, a, a missile war, which is what it is, the Green Pine Radar System, the Iron Dome, and Patriot Two as well as what's called theater air defense, which is much more advanced, as well as our plasma-based space weapon systems that can hit a missile as it's on re-entry by hitting it with a plasma weapon. We have those. We'll not get all these damn weapons. And I know because I worked as a civilian with Q-level clearance with Space Command and Strategic Defense Air Command. The fact is, if you start a missile war, you're not going to have a lot of casualties. You're going to have to have annihilation. The population of Israel will reach the level that they they said during the quote holocaust of seven million well let's say there was only six million during the holocaust this time they're going to get everybody and unless you're in a bunker underground you're going to die really quickly if they start a missile war secondly here's a scenario some guy in benghazi fires a missile takes a carrier to the bottom of the of the mediterranean we scramble our jets try to come in let's say half our jets get knocked out of the sky by uh, by the s-400 system but we do drop bombs on on uh, Damascus and vaporize it with, with advanced fuel air bombs or small nukes or whatever, what happens is the Russian uh, president's going to call, dial up Mr. Obama and say, listen, I have boomer Russian nuclear submarines, which, by the way, have five times the throw weight of our submarines, off east and west coast in each one of just one submarine on either coast. And we have lots of them. They were building before Glasnost and Perestroika and a new one every seven weeks. We can launch and take out every city over 50 to 100,000 people in America, and in 20 minutes, America will cease to exist. This is not a war that you want to start. This is something where you want to stabilize the weapons of both sides and cooler heads prevail, but we don't see that. Well, that's where we're headed. That's where we're headed. Welcome back, and uh, so the scenario is we have uh, Mr. Putin calling uh, uh, the so-called usurper-in-chief Obama after we uh, respond to a carrier going to the bottom and says we have a boomer off either east and west coast. We can take out all your cities in 20 minutes. America will cease to exist. Are you going to stand down? What we have is a situation where Obama is unilaterally trying to reduce our nuclear warfare uh, our nuclear weapons, if he gets a second term, by 90% unilaterally, which is stupid. I don't want nuclear war, but it's not done from this position. And secondly, his policy of just doing a non-congressionally authorized air attack and, and behind the scenes apologizing publicly and trying to pretend he's not for it, but he's being kind of teased or pulled into this war conflict by... And when Rice says that there's not air uh, between our policy and Israel's on, on Iran, it's just plain stupid. Uh, they couldn't pol to tolerate an, a ground attack against southern uh, Lebanon with the uh, rocket-propelled grenades and tank-killing weapons. How the hell are they going to be able to do a ground invasion of Iran to stabilize missiles that are aimed to strike every square inch of Israel with only a few, even non-nuclear weapons? Israel will cease to exist. 
It's well, they're just... not going to be able to. And, and the problem they're facing is that you have a uh, – what you mentioned about QE3 is that, in fact, the financial system has blown out. Oh, it's, 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 our, it's, a, it's, it's free fall. We just haven't hit the ground yet. You say, well, yeah. gee, this isn't too bad, and we're falling. You and I are, are both of us, let's say, our parachutes are tangled. And we say, gee, you know, falling's not so bad. I don't feel anything. No, because you haven't hit the ground yet. 87% well, of the have... world currency is in U.S. dollars, both in virtual dollars or printed dollars. And now with QE3, which is called infinite QE3, that percentage is going to go up, which means in a year, maybe 95% of all the world currencies will be in U.S. dollars. And it means global hyperinflation. The third world will starve to death, can't buy staples. The first world, the second world, the middle class will go bankrupt. And eventually, nobody will be able to borrow because you can't get credit. And the only way banks can make money, because you have to have 0% interest, is to play this Ponzi game, getting more money printed out of thin air. It's just crazy. Well, and the, the uh, QE3 in the United States followed the announcement by Mario Draghi, the head of the European Central Bank, that he is going to buy unlimited amounts of sovereign debt. And the argument is that they can make the banks... They can give the banks enough liquidity so the banks will not collapse, and therefore the derivatives won't unravel. The problem is not a liquidity problem. There's plenty of liquidity. Oh, yeah, it's, a yeah. solvency, it's a solvency problem. Exactly. They don't have enough uh, real assets. And so as a result, they're trying to replace those the, the, or protect those bad assets with new money from a new central bank. The well, i got a new, a new twist on this. What we're marching toward is the mark of the beast. Now, people say, oh, no, that's not possible. Well, I was one of the doctors that took care of the Virtual World Project. I took care of employees for six years in Colorado. And I've been through the quantum array at Shriver Air Force Base a couple of miles down of the Cray-4 supercomputer and Cray-5 gallium arsenide quantum computing. We have more quantum capacity computing than all of the nations on Earth by millions of times. And they have a virtual copy of Earth, just like the movie The Matrix, with everybody in the first and second world as a node in the ma- in the system, with a database on everybody. Every phone, fax, and email has always been monitored. This idea that all privacy, etc., hogwash. Every phone company in America and around the world, in fact, one of the comments made to me was, we can tell from the dial tone of your phone, whether you're on the bathroom phone or the kitchen phone in Basra, Iraq. They, they monitor everything. And the fact is the European Parliament talked about this over a decade ago, about uh, uh, their program, Project Echelon. The, the real fact is that Obama is complicit with a globalist move by bankers to completely take over all of the money on Earth, to divide the currency to the point where nobody has any assets, and eventually make us slaves in a now a virtual gulag where all of the money exists only in virtual space and their supercomputers, and even gold and silver or any form of bartering will be considered a federal or global crime. That's well, where we're a, heading. What, what we're seeing is... The, on the simplest term, without going through scenarios, what's already happened is that the financial system in the transatlantic region has blown out. It cannot be sustained. The amount of bailout that's needed is greater than could possibly occur. Yeah. And so they're going to keep having increased debt. And the solution of, that's being proposed of austerity is just designed to reduce populations, and it's already it, doing that. Exactly. So, in the third world, it'll kill them. In fact, most people don't realize the so-called Arab uh, Spring actually came out of starvation because they couldn't afford it. And I saw an interview at the start of this year and a half ago where it had a Libyan that was trained, I think, in Paris. He'd had a Ph.D. or master's degree. And he wanted to go back and run his family. Tunisian. Tunisian, that's it, Tunisia. Yeah. And he wanted to run his family's fruit stand or, or vegetable stand in uh, Tunisia. Yeah. And he couldn't afford to buy the local fruit to resell it because what happened is the credit had gone. Everything was shot to hell. And so what people don't understand is the third world countries, especially in the Middle East and elsewhere, now that you've had this Arab Spring, which really is, it should be called an Arab Winter, is designed to actually crush the third world and make them starve to death. This is the groundwork, by the way, before you lay out a plague. So the fall of the Lombardy system in the 14th century created the Black Plague. People think the Black Plague created uh, was created out of nothing. No, no, it happened out of the devastation of the economic chaos and starvation that allowed disease to spread. Well, and I mean, that's look what, at what's happening to our food supply now with the combined effects of drought and bad policy, including ethanol. And we're, you know, the Obama administration yesterday issued a decree that they're going to increase by 33% the amount of corn that's used for ethanol for next year. 
Now, this is when there's already acknowledged by the U.S. Department of Agriculture a severe shortage of corn for foodstuffs, for animals, and for human For animal feed, yeah. So, and by the way, it's yeah. different strains of corn. So these are not the same strains, but you can simply plant different ones. What it means is that the cost of meat is going to go skyrocket. The cost of other foods are going to, is going to go crazy. And what the fact is we're also... Going to starve? Yeah, a lot of people are going to starve. A lot of people are going to afford it. And by the way, 47% of the population in America are dependent on government handouts, which the government wants. They want eventually everybody to be either employed or controlled one way or another by government. And government is a bigger term. It's not just the U.S. government. It's global government with American government just being a proxy for that system. Well, and so if you take the situation that we were talking about at the beginning, why would the administration play with such a volatile situation as exists in the Middle East? And the answer is because they are, the Obama administration is operating on behalf of the British Empire. The British Empire is not limited to Kate Middleton's bare breasts. The British Empire is a global financial operation, which is at this very moment bankrupt. But right. it's maintaining its hope for being keep, keeping solvency. They're getting ready to reinvent themselves. They're, they're getting ready to reinvent themselves as a global biometric system, hell bent on killing ninety uh, percent of the world population. And, and they have people to make sure that there's no alternative system that could take their place. Right. They don't and want to have. A, the Bitcoin system or our virtual currencies where people can have privacy or gold and silver or any other system of electronic bartering. They don't want any other system. That's why they're trying to make it all illegal. In fact, in Patriot Act 1, all of these things that I mentioned are already in the Patriot Act. People don't know that, that the Patriot Act makes it illegal when the government decides to call for it, that even using silver and gold and bartering or hoarding more than two weeks of food considered a federal crime, one year federal crime sentence, you can be renditioned to any uh, camp uh, around the world and or permanently imprisoned without habeas corpus and or executed. And the fact is, these are all there, just like the National Defense Authorization Act, with the chambers loaded, ready for the safety to be taken off. That's all it is. And people say, no, 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 you're just exaggerating. No, I'm not exaggerating. Why do you think I get so worked up about this? I eat and breathe and sleep with this stuff. And the fact is, having that security clearance and seeing on the inside what's really going on, we're heading... I would say that we've got about six months before we end up with what I call the next major economic tsunami. By April of next year, we will be moving in from January, which is four months away, 15th, we have the implementation of the real ID. That means we're going to have a biometric ID issued for all American citizens by federal law. The, um, the, uh, the, the Minister of Homeland Security can designate an RFID chip in that ID at any time to her own discretion without any passage by Congress or even the President. We're in really big trouble. And we're going to have economic chaos, probably an air attack on Israel that's going to precipitate a depression of unbelievable proportions and major disaster on the entire world and an extreme danger of a thermonuclear conflict. Not good. That's so much. I said, you got a black hole there for throwing money down. Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. Yeah, lots of uh, topics here. We've got an amazing. The most important is we've got to remove Obama. We need to have, there should be no recess of Congress uh, in the Senate. Senate. Secondly, the Senate, they're trying to kill uh, the, the bill there in the Senate, too. Uh, as well by recessing. They don't want to proceed with that. And I just got an email earlier today from Rand Paul. They don't want to deal with some of these other major issues. Uh, this is, it's amazing, you know, it's always time to go on a break until after the election. Are you crazy? You're leaving Obama with the, with the nuclear football? And again, he was on uh, the late night television talk shows. That's his job. He's a talk show host. He should not be near the, the White House or the nuclear football. This man is a schmoozer. He's a chameleon. He would make a great alternative to uh, Jay Leno or these other guys. I'm sure that he'd even get good writers, so he'd have excellent jokes. But I do not want to see him in the White House. Well, and here's the... Let me just boil down to the, the, the key points again, because I think if someone's been listening, they, they might be a little bit confused on what we've been saying, because there's so much to say. Yeah. But just the key points... The Obama administration has had a policy 
of covering up for the real perpetrators of 9-11. Right. And they're continuing the policy of the Bush administration. They're not only continuing the cover-up, but they're aiding them. Even though Obama is using drones to kill some alleged al-Qaeda figures, the United States aided al-Qaeda in Libya, which is in a fight to see if they can come to power there now. And these are the people who killed our ambassador. We're aiding al-Qaeda in Syria, and we're continuing... The, the uh, Obama administration just uh, granted exoneration to the Saudis uh, a, that they will not be uh, prosecuted uh, for anything. So you have an administration which has covered up for the very networks that are out to not just kill the United States, but kill their own populations, launch total religious warfare. Well, now, I've heard I've heard reports that these... Uh these these nations like Saudi Arabia, Qatar, etc., that they have funded uh, many terrorists that are now either in Mexico or embedded in the United States, ready to respond against America. People that don't realize that. Well, they, 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 and, and in fact, there's a, a review on our website of the new book by or not of the new book, but old book by Senator Bob Graham. Uh, it's written by Jeffrey Steinberg. It's a bush, book review on theroushpack.com, and Senator Graham lays out the case against the Saudis. Now, he was the chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, and he's demanding that Obama declassify 28 pages of that initial 9-11 report. Obama is not going to declassify it because he's protecting these terrorists. Now, that plus the killing of the American ambassador and three other personnel in Benghazi constitute criminal, not just negligence, but a criminal action by the President of the United States. Now, if the Congress had the guts to pursue it, we could get Obama out as President now. And so I'm appealing to your listeners to go to our website and pull down the leaflet while LaRouche mm-hmm. says uh, impeach Obama for criminal complicity. Take that leaflet, read it, and get it around to the people you know. Get it to the Congress. We now have in our hands the legal basis for an impeachment. But we can't wait for an impeachment. He should be arrested, uh, as should Susan Rice, for their cover-up of a murder of a U.S. ambassador. Well, they had 48 hours notice plus. The, uh, what I find bizarre is I read the story of the local people trying to save the ambassador by going to this room that was closed off, a locked room, and had one small window, and they had to pull him through the window and realize he was still breathing, so they tried to, get, to give him CPR and help him. They brought There was no ambulance nearby, so they brought him. Wouldn't you think the ambassador's staff would know, like, where is the ambassador? When they're all evacuated out, I think there's, what, over 100 staff there? And yet they don't know where he is. He's in the so-called locked safe room, uh, dies of smoke inhalation. Nobody's going back to get him, and no ambulance is nearby. I mean, it's a setup. You can see it, can't you? Well, and that's the point. The president is complicit in this murder. Right. And I, I think, look, it can't be stated hard enough. The American people don't like Romney. They don't like Obama. They look like they're willing to settle for one of them. If we actually use this material to get Obama out before the election, it would change the election and we could actually start addressing some real issues. The, one so, of the big problems we have is that is that Obama is being sneaky about his support of Israel. Romney's being overt. He's an old buddy with Netanyahu, and he went to, to work yeah. for the same bank capital company. So, in other words, we can decide, as they say, if you're a shrimp and you can negotiate with the, with the master chef, you're going to be flambéed or sautéed, but either way, you're going to be cooked. So, in other words, Israel knows either way, with either one of these fools, we're going to war with a preemptive strike that's going to put America in grave danger. Yeah, and, and it doesn't have to happen. Our population is not happy. It possesses the legal basis for moving the Congress to do something. And we've now had four years. Obama's had almost four years to show what he intends to do. The fact that he he made a promise, and I, I think I just want to repeat this point for people. He made a promise to the family members of people killed on 9-11 in New York City. He made a promise to them that he would look into declassifying the evidence on the Saudi involvement. Three years later, he's done nothing. 
Yeah, what he people should understand. violated a sacred commitment. The fact is that a guy in renal failure and dialysis in a cave in Afghanistan could not have brought down not only buildings, steel buildings, which never happened in history, unless there was a controlled demolition inside the building, not jet aircraft. That meant there was access to the building, and the security uh, chief was Marvin Bush, George Bush's brother, whose last day on work was September 11th. The fact is that we have a government that's completely complicit. We know that all the so-called pilots were involved were pretty well Saudi or a few of these Islamic nations. That a number of them actually were not killed in, the, in these flights. They actually had their ID stolen, so they're still flying. And we know that, the, from my sources, the people that actually put the micronukes and the other advanced superthermate in the building were CIA-affiliated, just like these al-Qaeda terrorists, uh, Israeli Mossad, and most likely also uh, agents are involved with the Saudi government because I've got my sources tell me that there are conjoint agents that are Mossad and Saudi intelligence. They're linked at the hip. People don't realize that Israel and Saudi Arabia are conjointly linked. They're complicit in this. And, well, and, and, this, and this also goes back to the Bush family, their relationship with bin Laden, family interests, right. the Saudi royal family, and in particular, Prince Bondar. Right, Prince that's Bondar, what we was the yeah. U.S. ambassador and George W. Bush's closest ally. He's now the head of Saudi intelligence, and he's coordinating the global Sunni uprising, whether right. it's in Egypt, whether it's in uh, Syria, whether it's in Libya. So in other words, people want to start adding one and one together. Believe it or not, the Israeli and, and the Saudi are directly linked to CIA, and they're literally acting as operatives. We're literally funding people that are graduates of Camp X-Ray to kill people like our ambassador and to put in danger in a lot more places. Now they're calling for more terrorism, saying it's this film. That's the comment by Susan Rice, which I find so insulting well, and then, to say and that then the, the film Hino, caused it. I don't yeah. know if you saw this, but Putin said, why don't you just release the people from Guantanamo and send them right to Syria to attack the population <laughs> of Syria? Do you know what? He is too bright. You know what the thing is? The most dangerous man on earth is a Russian that doesn't drink vodka. <laughs> well, I, I think what Putin is saying uh, should be thought about by the American people because he is... He's well, you know, trying he, to stop he's, World War III. He's got a point, hasn't he? He said, look, these people have got motivation, they got material, they got tactics and training, and they're not willing to die, not, they don't have a problem with dying. So send them over there, even give them a packet of money if they manage to survive. Uh, this is craziness. This is the kind of yeah. foreign policy that, you know, is run to say, well, we need a dialectic, so we want a couple dead ambassadors and some other special forces. And by the way, there are people, the really nice people down here in San Diego County that were actually special security there down in Encinitas and other places here in San Diego. Yeah, San Diego is where the Saudi funding, well, at least two of the so-called terrorists were, was uh, out of San Diego. So uh, your listeners should go to our website, LaRouchePack.com, get the material, go visit your congressman without delay, because we've got to remove this guy immediately. And the number to call, of course, to get in touch with you directly is 800-922-2907, 800-922-2907. Yes, uh, Lyndon, and again... call that number and just tell them you want to talk to me, and I'll, I'll be happy to talk to you. So it's 800 800- 922-2907. And Lyndon is right on at 90. He's sharper than most people when they're 9, not 90. And the uh, LaRouche Foundation has it uh, d- has discerned the truth, divined the truth of this disaster that's impending on financial, geopolitical, and military, and the possible extinguishing of the human race if we don't smarten up and take action against these fools. Amazing. Okay, talk to you next week. Back in a moment with Hour 2, our Health and Wellness Hour, Hour 3, Dr. Bob Thiel, Barack Obama, Prophecy and the Destruction of the United States.